Miller. I am the Fedora project leader, and this is a Fedora Council video meeting. Uh, Fedora Council is the top-level leadership governance body for the Fedora project. We try to not conduct our business via meetings because meetings are terrible, but it turned out that not having any meetings meant we were getting a lot of things piling up and not getting done. And then we also wanted to have some high bandwidth kind of things where we use you know, video to actually communicate rather than doing a lot of typing back and forth, which actually typing back and forth is what this particular call is about, because uh, we have Matthew Hodgson here from Element Matrix New Vector. I, maybe he can actually explain what all that is all about. Um, and we are in the process of setting up a thing, uh, chat.fedoraproject.org, which is based on Matrix. Um, they are hosting it for us. It's an all open source thing. And it is basically a next generation alternative to IRC, I would say. And this is partly a work that, um, some work that I, we've been working on the Fedora Council and Fedora for a while, uh, where uh, there's a huge amount of work that goes on in the Fedora project every day, every year. Um, there's something like 11,000, I, I haven't done the accurate act number now, but 1,000 uh, video or chat meeting, text chat meetings every year in Fedora that happen in IRC. We have a lot of email going back and forth. Um, but these days, IRC especially, but even email are kind of uh, arcane, ancient internet protocols to a lot of people. And uh, it seems, so all that activity is you know, basically happening underground in the project. And IRC has a lot of things that make it um, not, not just that it's um, an old protocol, but just some of the, the way it works are barriers to entry for new users. So we've been looking at providing a newer chat platform to people, and so that uh, thing that we've selected and will be launching soon is Matrix-based. So uh, I guess I'll turn it over to Matthew here a little bit to talk about um, Matrix and Element and all of those things. Awesome, thanks Matthew, and um, thanks for inviting me to come and talk to um, everybody. And um, Please butt in with any questions at any point. I should also apologize, first of all, for any background noise, because I am in what looks like a kind of Victorian TARDIS interior, but actually is um, the Royal, um, let me get this right, it's the uh, Royal Society of Chemistry, um, where I'm, uh, I've been here for um, a thing for Element during the day, and they're going to kick me out at half past, so I apologize, but they gave me a room which is... It's really amazing. It looks like you've got some sort of super elaborate fake background, but it is actually the genuine um, it article. Is, it is, it is awesome. real thing. Yeah, wow. Uh, <laughs> Very silly. Either way, um, thanks for um, giving me the opportunity to explain Matrix and Elements, and you're right that the um, names are confusing. Um, nowadays, you only need to worry about sort of two names to get up and running. One is Matrix, which is the open source project and the protocol that we've defined. And I quite like the characterization of it as being a modern IRC, because that is completely shamelessly what we were aiming for when we created it back in 2014, because we were and still are massive IRC geeks. I've been IRC opping a Tolkien network since 1999. Uh, which gives you an idea of just how geeky I am and also how entrenched IRC is in our culture. And in fact, the company that um, ended up emitting Matrix um, started off at university as a student college IRC server, uh, which we continued to run for five years after everybody on the server had left the university because we left it built into a wall. Eventually they did um, turn it <laughs> off um, to do some building works. But it gives me an idea of how serious IRC um, was for us. And um, it's kind of frustrating because we were running um, our little startup at the time doing communication stuff, lots of SIP, lots of VoIP, lots of kind of SS7 and PSTN stuff. And we did it entirely over IRC. And we were very, very smug because it felt like a huge advantage to get stuff done. And obviously, in the open source community, it's a no-brainer that back in the early 2000s, everything happens over IRC. And yet here we were doing both a bunch of open source stuff. I was hacking on Videoland and FFmpeg and stuff at the time. And also, just for the day job, everything happened over IRC. And then when Slack came along and people started to say, wow, you can actually use chat rooms to get your <laughs> job done, this was not exactly news to us. And it was a bit frustrating because, you know, if somebody had done a 
IRC as a business startup 15 years earlier to perhaps Slack uh, uh, would not um, have got quite the momentum that it does today. Either way, what we did was to create Matrix as a protocol based on years of geeking out on IRC and other communication protocols. And it was really a thought experiment of um, why isn't there a standard API for doing instant messaging? Like, um, I don't know, if you want to send uh, any kind of text message on the internet, you've, uh, at the time, you had a choice of XMPP, um, where you're having to do a kind of custom TCP line protocol, and you go and chuck blobs of XML over it, and the XML isn't really demarcated at all. There isn't actually a kind of acknowledgement. It, seemed, it the... seemed like a good idea at the time, I think is the summary of that one. <laughs> yeah, and um, I mean, we, we ran um, XMPP servers before Matrix. We had a bunch of eJapadis, a bunch of open fires, and we wrote lots of XMPP clients, but we felt that we were fighting an awful lot against the protocol to add on things like message history or push notifications. And no, this was seven, eight years ago. Obviously, XMPP has moved on a lot since then and has got a lot better. But at the time, we kind of thought if you were creating a new protocol from scratch in 2014, what would it look like? Well, first of all, it's obviously going to have an HTTP API because everybody understands web service um, APIs. And you know, sending a message should be an HTTP put to some endpoint, probably called send message. And you give it a blob of JSON with the contents of the message, and then you've sent it. And then to receive a message, you're probably gonna, you know, the simplest thing in the world, the most stupid solution possible would be to just get a sync API and it will block until there's a message and then it returns the message. And that is all the matrix is. It's just a standard HTTP API for sending and receiving blobs of JSON in real time. Now it does have a slightly interesting additional facet which is that um, it's not just message passing by email or XMPP. Instead, you're actually replicating a conversation history for a chat room between the various different users in the service. So the full story is that if I'm sitting here on matrix.org, um, I might do an HTTP put to my server. It um, might say that you're in the room on fedora.im or um, fedora.org or whatever the domain um, ends up being. And it, my server will then do an HTTP put to your server, um, and then you will receive it by doing a GET request on your side. So it's a classic trapezium style put, put, GET kind of model. But the trapezoid in America. Tra uh, oh, really? You don't do trapeziums? Yeah, yeah, yeah right. A totally different okay. shape. I mean, same, different name for the same shape. So, but. <laughs> Yeah, so as long as I mean, tra tra trapezium trapezoid is, is okay. Yeah. It's like a, I know a scalene rhombus or something. I'd be completely <laughs> freaked out at this point. But, um, okay, so it's a trapezoid routing um, uh, mechanism. But the fun thing is that you're not just passing that message. What you're actually doing is replicating and synchronizing the copy of the room on my server with the one on yours. And tech speak, well, well, technically speaking, it's much, much more like Git than anything else that our servers are building up a directed acyclic graph of signed messages, just like a Git repository is a bunch of signed commits in a graph. It's literally the same data structure as Git, frankly. But every time I send a message, I'm effectively pushing a commit onto my version of the room, and it then goes and pushes it to your version of the same clone of that same room. And this is surprisingly subtly important, just like you know, the first time you use Git rather than Subversion or CVS or whatever, um, everybody has that sudden, oh my god, I've got the entire repository on my sort of local machine here. Everybody's got a clone. There isn't one true truth. GitHub isn't the truth. It's just to appear to my one on my computer. And people have that epiphany. So people have the same epiphany with Matrix, but there is no longer any single point of control or failure that uh, the copy of the conversation on my server is just as equally valid as the one on yours, is as valid right. on the one on element.io or any other server which is participating. So let me ask you a question about that. How does moderation work in that model? Is there, I mean, so if I do a git revert or whatever on my git thing, I can't very well push that to all of your repositories. Uh, how does that work for uh, matrix moderation? Yeah, so th we kind of approached this really pragmatically and thought, okay, how do I make sure that when somebody kicks somebody or they ban them or they try to speak, that um, everybody else participating in that room gets the message and acts on it correctly? And we kind of approached it as an engineering problem and thought, well, how, how would I do that? I should probably prove to you that I'm allowed to kick you. 
And so every operation you do in Matrix contains little proof, which is literally a, um, a JSON array of um, events which have happened in the past, which demonstrate to your server why my server thinks I'm allowed to do that operation. So if um, literally we were having this conversation over a sophisticated open source technology like Matrix rather than BlueJeans, then I might go and kick you from it. And I will say, hey, I'm kicking Matthew. And um, the justification is that I am, I set up this conference. I created it. I'm an admin. And uh, you can see that because I joined at this point. I created it and I got given this power at this point. And what you will do on your server is to execute the proof against your version of reality. And you literally use the same algorithm on your server implementation to say, well, okay, did Matthew Hodgson create the conference? Is he allowed to kick me? No, he is completely lying. He is a bad actor. He is. Um, coming up with fictions, and I'm not going to accept his kick event. And so as long as everybody in the room is executing the same proofs every time they receive a message, uh, which is pretty quick because it's literally just running it through a series of rules to say whether you're allowed to do the things or not, um, then you get effectively decentralized access control. Now, the interesting thing is what happens if there are net splits and you have partitions and what do you get if, for instance, somebody uh, maliciously sculpts a message that they fork from the very beginning of time. So imagine that you like check out the Linux kernel on Git and you go and push a commit against the initial commit and it's got some badness in it and then somehow that gets merged back in later on. That's quite a you know, fiddly malicious thing to do. But in the matrix world, that could be pretty catastrophic if you say, well, actually, didn't you get the message? So I did get power levels right there on day one. And you were just net split at the time. You didn't get the message. Then there is scope to try to manipulate it to do nasty things. So we have this thing called state resolution, and it's the most sophisticated bit of all of Matrix. And I apologize for people that we have gone straight into <laughs> no, the yeah, no, I, I feel like you've been talking to politicians, and you're like, oh, now finally I can let the geek <laughs> speak flow, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I might have oversteered a bit, but I, I, I promise everybody I'll come back up to like the surface in a, in a minute. But if you're interested in the decentralized sort of um, architecture of it, this is the crown jewels because you basically need to define a merge resolution algorithm so that if my server is out of sync with your server and your one you know, says that I was given ops and my one says that I banned you, how do you resolve these two things together in a consistent way? And interestingly, when we first implemented this, we got it wrong and it, we didn't really realize how wrong it was for a um, few um, um, years until, weirdly enough, somebody noticed it and exploited it and started taking over rooms and breaking rooms and it was all very embarrassing and we had a fire drill to redo the merge algorithm and this time get the rules right and this time prove mathematically, formally, that we got the rules right so that it wasn't um, um, subject to abuse like this. Now, the interesting side effect of this is that according to Karlsruhe Institute of Technology and the Decentralized Systems Research Group, this is a new field of maths, or at least computer huh. science, called Decentralized Access Controls without finality. We're the first people apparently to have figured out how to do <laughs> decentralized access control without basically taking out a lock, like sealing a block on a blockchain or like an AFS or something. You would literally have a global lock to try to make sure that the <sighs> file system is um, uh, synchronized. <laughs> AFS, so, awesome. Um, bit right. of a flash, uh, flashback. Yeah. So yeah, basically, yeah, okay. we pulled uh, the trauma we were... flashbacks right there. Uh, uh, I have actually have a question um, from the sure. comments here. Is uh, the, if it's like a Git repo, is basically is is a home server like the repo, or is it on a per room basis, or is it what what is the repo? Yeah, the repo is done per room, and the server co holds the copy of the node. And the client itself is very thin and very stupid. So we don't expose any of the funky um, graph data structure to the client at all. It's a bit like a, um, I don't know how you describe it. I mean, uh, yeah, if you were using a Git web interface like Gitia or something, or even the GitLab or GitHub um, web front end, that's more like the matrix client. And it's just talking a really simple HTTP yeah. interface to the server, which is then actually where the repo lives and is doing the funky stuff for keeping that in sync. One of the interesting things I learned as we were setting this up is that um, messages like uh, someone so and so joined the room and so on that show up in the chat are actually protocol messages happening that are being exposed in the client. 
Um, or in, 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 Ooh, yes, well, yes and no. So, or, so okay. Um, what I've learned is that if you delete those messages, it can actually cause the thing that happened to de be deleted, not just the um, the uh, mm. right. Like if somebody, no, no, no. if you if you change the room avatar and you delete the message that the room avatar was changed, you revert the change to the room avatar, which is surprising. Um, so, so it's complicated, but yeah. it should also, uh, other than the bugs, it should be absolutely, uh, it's quite a nice solution, I think. So basically the primitives you, you get in a matrix room are the timeline, which is just a series of messages, which can fork and it can reform if they're net splits, but it's just like the Git repository idea. You also, though, get key values in that room. So, for instance, who is in the room? What are their avatars? What's the room avatar? What's the room name? And in fact, any key value you like, it's completely freeform. And we use kind of Java style reverse DNS um, namespacing so that um, you can go wild and you could have an org.fedora.coffeepot event or something, which would track how much coffee there is in the pot and it'll be specific to you or whatever. It's basically allowing you to replicate around a decentralized hash of um, key values. I, I won't use the word decentralized hash table because that conjures up completely different mental images, but the end result is basically you're replicating key values around the place. And um, uh, these appear when they get updated, like normal messages in the timeline. It's just that they also happen to be updating a key value thing. So when you change your avatar, it literally is in some way a normal message, but on the other hand, it also updates this table, which is then used by clients to track what people look like. Now, if you redact that, which is the term we use for deleting the message, how it actually works is to delete the human visible information. So you're right that if there was semantic information like Matthew joined a room or Matthew kicked somebody, the, the actual kind of skeleton of the semantics would still be there. But if you redact it, then it ends up deleting um, um, anything human visible, like the name of the person when they did it, or the display name, or the avatar of the person when they did it. Um, which is what I think you're seeing there. So it, on one level, it has removed the human visible stuff. So it, don't, it did revert the name change. Okay. And it's kind of a moderation function to stop people if okay. they turn up with an abusive name. You want to be able to, as a moderator, delete it. Okay. But you also, it would be horrible if you took an immutable thing, because matrix is an immutable data structure, and you could actually go and somehow delete the fact they entered the room and that kicks them okay. out of the room. It gets really icky. Okay. So one of the... Um... One of the things uh, somewhat related to this that we want that doesn't exist, so we have a room that is supposed to be for announcements, um, and I found that that room is not a room for announcements. It is a room for five days' worth of people who don't have permission to post in their room joining and part leaving the room. Um, they, so would it be th possible to make it so that um, – those join and part messages aren't shown to clients when the person doesn't have the permission to post. Um, is or is that is that like an implementation detail, or is there something deep that's hard in that? Um, bit of column A, bit of column B. So you can fix it on the client by just hiding joins and parts, and you can do that in Element today. I think you can do it on a per room basis. Because yeah, there's a bunch of stuff that cannot be hidden. It's frustrating, um, but that's details. Um, Interesting. I, I reckon that there should be a join and part thing, but it might be global um, in the UI. Yeah. But all settings and element are done with what we call granular settings, which are you know, a bit like um, your good old um, GTK configuration files where you can drill into any level of granularity you like in order to override a setting. Um, we can expose that in the UI and element to make it easier to hide in. Um, but it's still a bit of a waste of bandwidth because you're still going to be downloading all of yeah. these random joints and parts all the time. So a much better approach would be what we call auditorium mode, where the client just is never told about the members of the room apart from the moderators. And I filed yeah. a bug for that about five years ago, and I'm afraid it has not yet hit the top of the to-do list. Uh, all right. Uh, I'll, I'll look for that now that I know auditorium mode because that's definitely a thing. Thing we're looking for. Thank you. That was a sidetrack. I forget what we were actually talking about, but that came to I mind. I think we're about three <laughs> levels deep in the stack. Yeah. Um, uh, we were talking about decentralized access control, but I think we bottomed that one out. Before that, it was names and what is matrix. And I never quite got to say <laughs> that matrix is a protocol, but element is an app. And oh, yeah, so... that's where we were going. It was all right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So the the kind of it should be a pretty familiar model because um, matrix is to Linux as, I don't know, Red Hat is to Element. 
um, if I got that the right way around. So basically, elements is a red hat equivalent, but for the matrix ecosystem, in that it's a random tech startup, which is for profit, that is, employs a lot of people who hack on matrix, just like red hat um, has employed lots of people who hack on the Linux kernel. And it's slightly different in the, I founded Element, and I also founded Matrix with my co-founder, Amandine. And it's more as if, what if Linus had gone and done a Linux startup, um, which I think he briefly did once, possibly, but um, that's more the uh, analogy. But the point of Element is basically to pay for the Matrix core team to keep hacking on Matrix full time and also to be a flagship client because a lot of the open source and open protocols that precede us failed we think because there was never a good app like what, what was the killer app for x and pp i message possibly like google had the google, google, google talk message yeah yeah, yeah. Google uh, talk. Right. And, and then they decided to not do it so that um that just made so, my phone ask how it could help me. So, uh, yeah, but shut uh, up. God, uh, that is a dystopia. <laughs> all right, seriously. Um, yeah, Pigeon, Pigeon is the killer app. Um, one, one comment Alexander made a long time ago is I'd said this is going to what I forget what I said about IRC. Um, an alternative to IRC, uh, I think it more of an enhancement to IRC in a lot of ways. We are actually bridging all of this to Libera chat and all of our official rooms at this point or most of them are bridged. Um, I don't, Honestly, if people ask me about this. I don't want to scare the IRC folks away. I know we love IRC, but um, I really think we need to be matrix first for a lot of our decisions when, when there are things, because there are, the bridge is always going to have some mismatch, and trying to stick to things that always work perfectly on IRC mean we're held back to things that work perfectly on IRC. Um, so IRC is always going to be the other side of the bridge, I think. Um, and, you know, if uh, if you disagree, um, come talk to me. I, I'll, I'll be happy to, to take your criticism on that point. But um, I think that's the way we've got to go if we want to make, if we want to move forward. And I think we need to move forward. I mean, as I said, we are and still massive IRC fans on the Matrix side. And the first bridge that we wrote back in 2014 was the IRC bridge. And I think as of the last couple of months, particularly after Libra came online, um, we have hit the kind of platonic ideal of IRC bridging in that we have, we bridge absolutely everything that we can as faithfully as we can, um, which is not the case until Libra, frankly, um, uh, what can, how can I put it? They um, encouraged us very strongly to improve the bridging semantics to be the <laughs> optimal solution before they would let us turn on the bridge between Libra uh, and uh, Matrix. Well, but, good for them. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, it's fine. I, it's fair enough. I get it. If I was running an IRC network yeah. and you had all these annoying Matrix people turn up and they keep editing messages and doing reactions and things, I'd feel pretty upset. Um, so they use the opportunity to reset things and we did so and they now have an official matrix server so you you can join rooms or channels on Libra by going to hash wherever colon Libra dot chat on matrix so it's very very transparent and the improvements that we did were to improve so I can uh, I can join an arbitrary Libra chat channel yep. I had no idea um, and That's, I'm, really I'm going to go join US, some so. right after this meeting. Uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, Nick yeah. says it's what uh, basically channel at Libera chat. So they've got, yeah, okay, well, that's that's cool um, and super useful. So we could actually double join our channels for um, those Yeah, things. oh, please, please don't right. double bridge. In the worst case, you can end up with like rooting loops. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, always right, no. suggestions uh, to do uh, spanning tree uh, protocol uh, over yeah, yeah. the matrix bridge right. and stop yeah. this from happening. Mm. Yeah, um, I sorry, I just went to the horrible, horrible approach right away. Um, yeah, so um, in Fedora, we're basically offering um, two things here. So we have, well, if we have three home, through two home servers and a client, basically. So um, the main thing from a uh, end user point of view we're offering is chat.fedoraproject.org, which is basically a hosted instance of the Element Web Client. Um, so you can log into that. Um, uh, Matthew, you know this, this is for the for the audience at home, right? So you can log into that and, and uh, basically access the Fedora chat thing. And in a lot of ways, that is the um, preferred experience because that uh, will automatically connect you to some of our spaces and rooms. And so you'll kind of get things set up the way we're planning to have them set up for you. Um, 
But we're also, um, since, uh, since it is this distributed protocol, uh, you can actually connect to those spaces and rooms from any other, anywhere else on the matrix, basically. And so uh, we have two different home servers. One is the fedoraproject.org home server, and all of our official rooms are channel name fedoraproject.org. And then um, we have, we may have like a bot account running with the fedoraproject.org matrix address as well. Then all of the user accounts are fedora.im accounts. And so uh, you'll get username, uh, fedora username, uh, fedora IM account. Uh, and then you can also set up informal rooms and spaces and things using that, that namespace if you're a Fedora project member and you know, uh, basically our rule is, and we're still working on our policies, but as long as it's Fedora related in some way, um, you can use the, that space for that. But, you know, please keep it Fedora related because we do not have an infinite number of resources here. Uh, that's uh, basically it. Um, yeah, uh, anything else you wanted to share with us? Oh, so much, so much. Um, so on the IRC versioning side of things, the fixes that we did were to improve how replies look so that they actually look idiomatic for IRC. Um, something that we haven't landed but will land soon on the bridges is also the ability for the bridge to disable features on the matrix side. So that if you happen to have some existing IRC channel um, and people want to communicate with the subset of matrix, which doesn't have reactions or edits or typing notifications or any of the stuff which, um, no, where a matrix exceeds IRC, you would actually be able to negotiate it to turn it off. So I imagine for the Fedora, once you want it on, because you actually want to have the emoji and the um, you know, reactions yeah. and all the other richer stuff. But if you are going into, I don't know, hash hash Linux or somewhere which hasn't changed since the 90s, then um, yeah. I, it basically will try to give the most faithful bridging possible. But it's basically an yeah. impedance mismatch in engineering. Terms. Right. Yeah. And so um, and we'll have to see how this goes. But actually, one idea I actually have is that um, if we find out that that's causing more frustration than good, um, we can keep our bridged rooms, but put them in a IRC bridge space and have that be the IRC bridge section and then have those, yeah, uh, that I didn't know about that possibility, but that would be perfect. And basically have all those just be, this is the, these are the bridged rooms. And then these are, um, have, you know, separate rooms that are not there. And, and that may be, um, for, you know, for like the pound Fedora channel that's been around forever and has a lot of IRC culture behind it maybe that's the way we'll, we'll see what happens when we uh, eternal september that channel uh, yeah. with our new server uh, that that's yeah, right. uh, i think the biggest risk is if people are using reactions for semantic purposes like to agree with somebody or to vote on something and we don't bridge those to irc because seriously how would you it would be horrible if every time somebody sent a thumbs up you got literally a random thumbs up turning up uh, with the message yeah. posted again then i think that might be the point where uh, either you yes. decide so matrix is primary or irc is primary yeah uh, that's like like twitter dm notifications do that it's terrible um right yeah so th that that is a bad thing i'm glad you don't do it um yeah so a question is uh matrix compatible with like meetbot for logging meetings um I think I can answer that. Yes, um, it basically works over the bridge. Although sometimes some of those um, rich things get a little bit confusing. Um, I think one one of our bot things uh, that we have for IRC, we use we do username plus plus gives you cookies. Um, and in Matrix, when you complete somebody's name, it puts a colon after it, and our bot doesn't recognize username colon space plus plus as a cookie granting thing Sorry, so we, yeah no, yeah i mean you know it's fine i think probably fix the bot there is um the, the thing to do uh i think eventually we probably want to make our meeting bots matrix native um which is uh that way we can have the bots do things like keep track of the reactions for example i think that in particular is a useful thing right there um we, we could actually even use the you could uh, use the reactions for semantic things where you could actually use the reaction to tag something in the meeting as, um, oh yeah, we need to put this in the meeting minutes rather than actually basically use the, the reactions to annotate. Uh, I think that would actually be really useful. Um, we'd have to then have the bot regenerate. Anyways, work, work to do there, but I think that would be cool. 
That's um, precisely how we did it actually for FOSDEM, um, the big European open source conference, which ran on Matrix this year. And every single talk that they had, and they had like 666 talks, slightly scarily, um, and each one um, had a green room where the um, presenter and the kind of moderator would hang out whilst people watched the talk, and then you'd have a live Q&A session on afterwards. And what the bot did was to count the thumbs up on the questions which were presented for the audience whilst they were watching the recording of the video, and then summarized them and presented them actually as a widget, which is a concept we have in Matrix, where you can basically iframe arbitrary web content and embed it in a chat room. So um, you basically have almost, a main tally board. Almost all content, because a lot of it does not like to be iframed these days. I, uh... Yeah, this is true. Uh, this is true. We, you get a no banana graphic, if I remember correctly. If you try to iframe something which has a X no frame header on it, or a cause header to yeah. stop you from getting uh, at it. A lot of the stuff I wanted to put as widgets in the Fedora infrastructure is protected in that way already, unfortunately. So I need to figure out some workarounds for some things. Well, depending uh, on who hosts it, so I'm just go and buy the um, SREs a beer or two and, yeah. and, <laughs> and then, uh, get them to special case the headers for your IP range. That, that you might. Can, yeah, um, we'll have to figure that out. Um, let's see, yeah, one of the other neat things I saw with Matrix Reacts, there's a um, it's this week in Matrix or something. There's a Matrix, Matrix Weekly News, so it's just a a channel where every week the bot goes back and scrapes and looks at the different reactions. You actually use a different emoji for what category of the newsletter this is to go into. So um, th I think that's kind of fun, and we could use that for. We could also, um, you know. Um, Use that for things that get a certain number of votes, get put up as highlights. Uh, that seems really cool. I'm very interested in setting something up like that once we get a time to do that. Because uh, uh, I saw one of the most um, hilarious and hackerish uses of reactions ever yesterday, which is that we've got um, a moderation bot called Mjolnir, which is open source and it um, is designed to let big communities go and like enforce bans. It's a bit like an egg drop bot back in the IRC yeah. days. And um, historically, its user interface has been completely pling commands, like pling ban whoever, or pling kick, or redact, or whatever. And it's a pain, particularly where if you're under attack and people are brigading a room or something, and you're sitting there on a mobile device typing like, right. exclamation mark redact and a matrix like it's a huge pain. And as of yesterday, they merged on this user interface, they call it rather gomically, where rather than having pling commands, you just have lots of reactions every time something happens. And so you basically start off giving a menu of like eight different reactions. It's like one plus one redact, plus one ban, plus one kick, etc. And then you just have to go boop to click on the reaction button. And I'll have to see space. what that looks like. <laughs> it, it, it's basically DIY forms in a really simple sense, hacked together <laughs> using reactions. So it's literally just one click. So if you increase any of them beyond one, then it will do that action for you, if that makes sense. It's a stupid, stupid hack. A bit like yeah. people on Facebook or whatever <laughs> saying, hey, vote with a different emoji depending on whether you believe in X or not. Yeah, it's, well, that's uh, pan pandering for likes is what that one is. But, yes, well, um, Oh, I had another thought, but it's entirely escaped my mind um, here. Um, uh, what what interesting things do you think are coming in the next couple of years in Matrix? So Spaces was this big feature that just launched, and it's pretty important to how we're using it in Fedora. Um, we really we because we have so many different channels. Organizing them with Spaces was basically mandatory for us. Yeah. Um, what what else is exciting that's coming up, other so, than the auditorium feature, obviously. <laughs> So there's um, the kind of second phase of spaces is synchronizing access control based on space membership. Also hierarchies of spaces. So you have that today, but the UX isn't fully um, finished. But <laughs> it's what I'm most excited about because it allows anybody to curate a hierarchy of spaces, uh, a hierarchy of rooms. And this thing can be public or it can be private. And if you combine that with the decentralized ACLs that I was banging on about earlier, you actually end up with a global hierarchical namespace where you can delegate control to anybody you like. And joking aside, it's a little bit like AFS or Coder or one of these distributed global file systems, except it, anybody can join it. 
it's Byzantine fault tolerant and you actually have strong ACLs. So if you think back to Usenet and all the drama about getting a new news group added and you know we're going to have splinters in the namespace and we're going to have the alt dot namespace and all that sort of thing uh, with different moderation policies, you could do the same thing with Matrix and basically carve up every single chat room there into a great big taxonomy. It's like the sort of quintessential on ont the ontological problem of going and trying to categorize everything and say so kind of have animal, vegetable, mineral or whatever mm. criteria you have. And everybody can do their own one if they want, or they can pile on, pick a route and start curating. And it's a bit like DMOS or one of these kind of grand yeah. um, classification uh, projects. And I cannot wait to see people well, using spaces for that. Well, and, and unlike those things, um, I don't know if any of them had links, but um, a space can belong, or a room can belong to multiple spaces and rooms in the same hierarchy as well. So if you have a categorization problem, you can put things into two spaces and be like, here, it's both places, uh, which, I, I have a terrible, terrible thought based on something you said earlier about distributed hashes. Um, can't can't we just use matrix for NFTs instead of burning up the planet using um, blockchain for it? Oh god, uh, yeah. I mean, if you want to start um, using matrix as a kind of immutable um, chain, you could. But what the, the character, the properties we don't have are double spend and the global lock. There is never one single truth in matrix that. I don't know, if you're on the um, Fedora project server and I'm on matrix.org and the two net split and we just keep randomly talking on our respective servers to ourselves um, and I might mint an NFT on the matrix server, um, which is all very well, but it's not a globally unique thing. But because there is never a global lock, if we never heal that net split, all I've done is to create some signed data on a data structure on my disk. And it's, that's, it's just like in that's Git, a, you, could, you can't yeah. NFT a Git commit because it, if you don't push it anywhere, then you know, big whoop, what does it mean? Oh, the big whoop, what does it mean, actually also applies to the other ones as well. But <laughs> I can't possibly uh, say that. <laughs> but uh, I get in trouble saying this on YouTube, I don't know. Um. <laughs> I know, the brilliant thing about NFTs is that the... Yeah. Um, it only works because of the scarcity of it being a novelty thing. That it has value yeah. because people don't know what they are and they have to tell their mate that I've bought it. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, a, yeah. a square patchy, yeah, yeah, a square yeah. mile on the moon or whatever it is. Right. Uh, it sounds very, it is very much the square mile on the moon. Absolutely. Yeah. Or the names of stars. The right. Yeah. And, yeah. And, uh, and scarcity uh, immediately vanishes. Then <laughs> yeah. I can't wait to see what happens to the price of the things. Yeah, anyway, right. we should probably not crash the <laughs> yeah, NFT yeah, yeah, market yeah. by accident. Um, we'll get this the most popular, um, most downvoted Fedora Council video <laughs> ever. Um. Um, so right. other, other things coming up. Um, we've got uh, native uh, matrix video conferencing um, coming up uh, in a few weeks. Hopefully, uh, we're aiming. But to is that it. Um, how, how does that fit with what we're paying for in Fedora already? Is that an add-on thing, or is it? Um, you would, so, so at the moment, uh, you get Jitsi integrated, which is great, and we love the Jitsi guys, um, but it doesn't um, talk Matrix. It's not integrated with the access control model. It doesn't directly use Matrix's end-to-end -end encryption, and it's not decentralized. So if your Jitsi server goes down, then it's curtains for everybody on that call. Uh, whereas Matrix, of course, can just be used for native proper video calling, and we've always had it for one-to-one -one calls. So we've just finished adding in MSC 3401, written by yours truly, if you're interested, um, that adds it to, um, in, adds in group video and voice calling. And it just extends the one-to-one -one stuff to work with groups. And it's kind of fun because it's a meta protocol. It's not saying thou shalt do conferencing in Matrix in this manner. It's basically giving you the building blocks with which to build a conferencing approach. So it could be a stream forwarding unit like Jitsi, or it could be a um, an MCU, a multi-point conferencing unit so, like uh, Polycom or something. But from a pragmatic point of view, are you also building an implementation of that in the Element web client? Yep, and we have it on a branch of Element. Um, we actually realized that it's, uh, by baking it in specifically to Element, it would slightly limit its appeal. So we're actually going to launch it at first as a standalone web app, very similar to Jitsi. Um, it has a name, but um, I'm not going to announce it yet. So keep, keep right, it fair. That. But um, it will be talking on Matrix, and so once Element itself does have it natively built in, and or any other Matrix client, um, then you can just hop on. And it's designed to be really easy for the clients to implement. If your client can talk WebRTC, 
like I think um, Neko Cam is a native matrix client. Obviously, anything in a web browser has it automatically. I think Quaternion might have it by QT6 or 5.6 5 or whatever. Um, then you would be able to fairly easily make, give Jitsi style capability within the client. But the really fun thing is that it's decentralized so that if you have, I don't know, a conference like this one and we were doing it literally over Matrix rather than blue jeans, we might have 10 people on the matrix.org server and we might have 50 people on the Fedora project server. And if something did go horribly wrong on one of the servers or there was a net split, all that would happen is that the people on the local server would still quite happily keep chatting to themselves. So if you're thinking of it in a geo-distributed office context, and I know you're in Australia and Australia's backbones go down, um, but everybody locally in the office can still keep chatting to one another or in the same country can keep chatting. That's super powerful. Like, you'd normally have to pay loads of money from some funky cascaded conferencing vendor like Blue Jeans to try to provide something like that. And in yeah. practice, I don't think anybody does. So does that, um, does, one of the things with the Jitsi thing that we're missing, um, the permissions in the Jitsi thing are not linked to the mod, the matrix rooms at all. Will with this, will that be solved? Can I make a call that? Uh, well then, good. That's a straightforward answer. Yeah. So it'd be nice to have a room, a chat, a you know, linked to a room, and then people who can speak in that room can speak in the thing. And if somebody gets moderated in the chat, do they automatically get kicked off the conference? Yep. Perfect. So it's um, literally using the same. Well, the, the WebRTC signaling effectively goes over the same thing that you would use for sending messages. So all the same normal rules apply, and all of the end-to-end -end encryption you basically get for free. So then the second question is uh, streaming and recording options. Um, what same as are Jitsi, those? basically. So for Jitsi, what you do mm -hmm. is to have a headless X server um, that you run Chromium in, and you pipe the virtual frame buffer into FFmpeg and put it to disk. That is all what Jibri um, does, which is the tool that Jitsi ship in order to record Jitsis. And we would do precisely the same thing with the catch that we're going to make very sure that the little um, web app client um, is predictable in terms of what it shows on the server, because I'm sure anybody who's ever tried to record in Jitsi is familiar with a slight pain where um, yeah. you have no idea what the server is going to be recording, and you discover you've recorded an hour of somebody's ear or like... Yeah. <laughs> Yes, that's very frustrating. Um, or yeah, no, no video from the speaker for some reason on the recording. Yeah, Oops. I just decided to pin to somebody because the active speaker detection wasn't working. All that stuff. Yeah. It's, just, um, it's got a lot of moving parts. It's yeah. a great um, product. And we love the team, and they use Matrix for the end-to-end -end encryption. But it would be even better if it natively taught Matrix. They're not going to do that. Yeah. So, so kind of Muhammad had to come to the mountain. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, with with that, will it be able to just do like the the Jitsi.org thing um, or Jit dot whatever it is? Um, you can basically stream it to YouTube. Um, it doesn't have a like a thing that will generate a downloadable file for you. Can, will this do that, or do you can you do that? So we can actually do that That's... today with Jitsi. It can chuck out HLS um, HTTP live streaming. It can also stream via RTMP, the last relics of Flash, over to YouTube. Right. Um, but so um, yeah, yeah I, we would swap it out so you get the same thing for the new gener next generation. Yeah. The the thing that I like about Blue Jeans that we're using right now is after this call, I will get a mail that says your video is ready and there's a web interface with a link to it where I can download it or share it. That would be a, a nice feature um, you know, that Jitsi doesn't have as it is. Um, Something I should warn is that we probably won't be hosting, in fact, we definitely won't yeah. be hosting that for free because, yeah. as I mentioned, that's you're basically fair. That's a GPS for yeah. anybody who's recording one of these. And yeah. so whilst obviously it will be open source and you can run it yourself if you want and do it yourself, um, to do it at scale, it will be a paid element um, thing yeah. um, if you want that, us to host it for you. That makes sense, and we'll, we'll look at the options for that when that comes out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it should be um, too bad. Does anybody else have any questions? Either high level or deeply technical? We clearly have room for both here. Uh, Mo says logging. What's the question about logging? Are there clients that enable local logging? Yeah, I guess this is some of our IRC folks like to have a local log um, and 
are surprised that the log is a thing that belongs to the server. Yeah, um, mm. she says, grepping my IRC logs is a gold mine. Um, so the good news is that as of Monday, we shipped Element Web 1.9.1, .1, and that has, for the first time ever, conversation export in it. And this was contributed via a Google Summer of Code student called Jay Wamp, um, who did an incredibly good job uh, blitzing away by himself over the summer and single-handedly implemented this huge um, logging capability where you can basically take any given room and you can export it as HTML or IRC style UTF-8 or as um, JSON for structured logging. And you can say, hey, I want the, the last six months, the last 20,000 messages. I don't want attachments. I do want attachments or whatever. So this is a huge step in the right direction but it doesn't give you real-time logging of the way that Mo or myself would love to have um, because you know, I've still got all my .xchat logs dating back to the 90s and I really miss that. So uh, we also want to improve the server-side um, search a lot. Um, and there's the perverse thing that we do support, client-side search for end-to-end um, -end encryption because you obviously can't do that server side because the server can't see the messages. So in Element Desktop, you actually have a encrypted SQLite database, um, encrypted with SQL Cipher, which contains all of your end-to-end -end encrypted history so that you can search it locally. So we're tantalizingly close to actually having grepable logs. They're just encrypted, logged in the SQLite database and specifically for the encrypted rooms. So long story short, we've got all the infrastructure in place. Lots of people would love it. And I miss grepping my IRC logs too. All right. Uh, another question is, some clients don't respect the message callback operation, so the deletion event is not replicated in all the connected clients. Any plans on somehow making that uniform across all the clients? No, it is a um, causality paradox. Unfortunately, we can't <laughs> force the humans or their computers to delete messages, even if we ask them very, very much. The only way we could do something like that would be via DRM, at which point we all go to hell. So, <laughs> I mean, honestly, um, yeah. it, it's a feature that if I try to delete my message, there is no way to reliably force anybody else to do it. Um, I have yet to see any server go and disable redactions. You could obviously write in your own server to disable it. Um, on the clients, all of the normal ones should. And it tends to be such a socially important thing in Matrix that if somebody posts a password into a room and then wants to redact it, and they accidentally go and send a selfie that they thought they were sending to their other half and it actually goes out into a 25,000 person chat room, you kind of want to be able to remove it. And so I haven't seen a native Matrix client that ignores redactions for a long time. But Akash, do you, do you know is, what client you were talking about? I bet it's an IRC bridge, because obviously yeah. if that message goes oh. out over the IRC bridge, and IRC, bless it, doesn't have redaction semantics, you're screwed. And that's just... Um, <laughs> yeah, what, does, so, what does Matrix do? Does it post like a whoops, please ignore? <laughs> <laughs> It should like send an um, emoji of an eagle or something, say, look, an eagle! <laughs> or, I don't know, flood the tablet yeah, to yeah, try yeah, to get yeah, the yeah. message out of the way, or fire up an automated um, uh, DOS against the IRC network to try to yeah. kill everybody. Right, so yeah. this, was an IRC, this was an IRC bridge chat. And so, actually, honestly, this might be another reason for that thing I was talking about earlier, which is to separate out the bridge channels and the matrix channels so people know what to expect on the other side. Um, but um, I don't intend for us to do that now, but if we end up coming up with a lot of problems and this becomes difficult, um, we have that option. Um, yeah, Nick really wants the main rooms bridge, and Nick is our, one of our tireless IRC and matrix admins. So um, I, right. I think that's a last uh, resort thing. Um, yeah. but, uh, but, uh, I guess there are other impedance mismatches to the, I know, frankly, IRC is effectively a public medium, particularly in a public chat room, obviously. Yeah. And just as you can't force people to delete messages, if people do pay something stupid, then you know, worst case, people are going to start taking screenshots of it before yeah. it um, gets um, redacted. So the analog gap is always there. So it's a bit of a fool's errand to try to um, make the deletion successful there. But if you actually want more privacy, um, and you want a private chat room of end-to-end -end encryption, and obviously in the Fedora context, this is going to be a lot rarer, but imagine that you've got the security team coordinating on some release, and it's a really sensitive, disastrous issue. Somebody's been printing SSH private keys with the same barcode. We, we, you know how we're going to do that? We're going to be doing that on the phone 
actually. Uh, so. <laughs> well, I hope not, given how insecure the phone is. Uh, yeah, well, uh, yeah, honestly, we're um, a lot, lot, lot better than GSM in terms of security. Um, but um, basically, um, th that kind of breaks a uh, bridging scenario because if you are relying on the signal style end to end encryption that you get in the private chat rooms and matrix, and then somebody wants to be DM'd, uh, RSC is obviously not end to end encrypted. It's very often not even transport layer encrypted. Um, so uh, you would have to compromise the end to end encryption of the matrix to go for the bridge, terminate the encryption at the bridge, and then send it out plain text over RLC. So that's obviously not ideal from a privacy or a security perspective. And that's um, another point where you might want to say actually bridges aren't the right tool for this because we want matrix for the security, but for a very no domain specific thing like a security response. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, Nick, you've been doing a lot of work on all of this. Thank you very much, by the way. Um, you've been doing a huge amount, and I really appreciate that. Um, do you have any questions or comments or observations you've come up with as you've been doing all that? Not to put you on the spot too much, but maybe a little bit. Well, I've, I think I've figured most of it out, and thanks to um, the Matrix people that are in our channel we've been using to discuss all of that. Um, the comment, which I don't know that there's really a way to solve it because I know they explained to me that it's because of limited connections, but um, the thing about how um, if you're idle in a channel, it will kick you. I can explain that one. Um, so that is part of the contract with um, Libera and before them Freenode, where they don't want a situation where random people um, pass by some channel on IRC via Matrix, and then they close the Matrix client. And because Matrix is a persistent chat idiom, um, that doesn't kick you out of the room like it would if it was an IRC client, where obviously if you close the connection, you leave the server and you leave the channels on that server. So it would be very easy for some random flyby person to go and experiment with Matrix, join Hash Fedora, Pound Fedora, and then close their client and never come back. At which point the bridge would otherwise be keeping that connection open um, to the IRC network for the rest of time. And that is like yeah, literally true. just going to keep um, stacking up resources and they're going to keep randomly replicating the messages down the TCP socket to the bridge and it will just be stacking up patiently in case Bob ever comes back. So um, I think it's very relatively reasonable that the Libra and the Freenode guys before them um, said, look, bridge is fine, but if somebody has gone completely absent from Matrix for 30 days, can you please get rid of their okay. ghost on the IRC so side? So that brings up, so is it they're absent from any channel or they're yeah. absent? Oh, okay, okay. I didn't, I didn't realize that. I thought it was in a particular channel. Like I'm in some bridge channels that I don't rarely talk in, but I talk in others. So then yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't get no, kicked fine. from the other channels. And also, okay. um, I don't think it's even that you are, you don't even need to be active on the network, you just need to be active on Matrix. So the okay. metric that we use is that if we haven't seen any traffic of any kind, like presence or typing notifications or a login from that user on Matrix for 30 days, then we add them to the send bin and get them off the um, IRC network. So they really need to be a goner. Um, it's happened to me once okay. because I actually went on holiday um, for ages um, and one of my accounts pinged out. And honestly, it does feel a bit violating, but then again, it's a lot better than an IRC model where you obviously get kicked out the second that you close your window. Um, so, oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. well, that, that, re I mean, that resolves my concern. I didn't realize it wasn't per, I didn't realize it wasn't per channel. So that that's good because I think people should awful. be on people should be on matrix doing something at least unless they're totally gone. Well, I think so. <laughs> but yeah, it's a US yeah. problem. The, the the error yeah. isn't um, as clear as it should be. Uh, we can get that fixed. I shall file a bug.
And uh, one last thing here. Um, any requests to the Fedora community from you know, from the Matrix side? What what can we what can we do to help you? Well, um, honestly, I haven't heard any like problems from the uh, from my side as the project lead for Matrix, where um, I know people working with the Fedora community are turning up and saying, "Oh God, those Fedora people don't understand anything." <laughs> Instead, it's been, it's been the opposite. That oh, it's so nice to work with people who really understand what Matrix can do, and it's so nice to see people migrating yeah. over from IRC to Matrix rather than Discord or Slack or some proprietary, closed and unencrypted privacy destroying solution like that. So um, honestly, I don't think we've got any asks at all, other than if it works, please tell your friends and tell your other projects and spread the word yeah. and help grow the network because um, you know, if we build it, they will come as it were, but uh, yeah. we're still in the bootstrapping phase. Yeah. I'm yeah. glad you added, I'm glad you added the, uh, what's it called? Allow unconnected matrix users um, mm -hmm. setting because we were running into with the um before we really started this whole project i mean before we really started moving to matrix we had some bridges and we were running into where i guess someone didn't show up on matrix or on irc from matrix so then the bridge wouldn't pass any messages but since but lately i've been setting that in all of our rooms um and that's made that go a lot smoother cool yeah no i mean i know that some of the feedback we've had from you guys has gone straight into um our kind of immediate roadmap to make things um, successful yeah. so if, there, I, if there's I've... been stuff like that please keep it coming because even though we have a lot of um, issues coming in uh we do also try to prioritize them for particularly impactful folks and yeah, you know, and the, the classic example of an open source community, we want to be overjoyed with the experience yeah. of using Matrix. And yeah, that that having that setting now has made it a lot better. And I mean, I've I've really been pleased um, when I've been setting it up. I've um, it seems easy to work with and everything. Cool. I'm glad. Cool. I'm and gonna I think, have to drop, yeah. I'm afraid, because I was yeah. meant to be kicked out of here half an hour ago, and nobody yeah. has kicked me out, which presumably yeah. means I'm now locked in the Royal Society for Chemistry and was having spent all evening. I hope this is the beginning of an list. amazing story, and I would like to hear later. Look, oh, I guess it's, you're probably mainly seeing your <laughs> reflection, Matthew, but uh, that some of these books are incredible. I feel like I'm wow. in the library in Hogwarts here. If you, anybody yeah. has any questions about alchemy, it's all here. It's like books written by Boyle, written physically by Boyle, by the looks of it. So, very exciting. That that is that's amazing. All right, yeah. I hope you're locked in there overnight. I want to hear the story later. Um, thank you, everybody. Um, thank you very much, Matthew. This was a really fun session, and we'll get this up and publicized, um, and hopefully have our Thing launched soon. Uh, we're still waiting on a few things where we need um, some documentation and there's a legal thing I need to deal with, but um, hopefully very soon we will be launching uh, all of this. Um, yes, and again, thank you very I much. Can do to help things along in terms of legal stuff or oh, it's, 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 it's a it's a GDPR something something thing. Um, yeah, well, GDPR uh, should be good. We spent yeah, so yeah, much um, time. Right, I'll, 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 tell, I'll tell you later what the deal is. Um, okay. The um, yeah, anyways, um, that should be coming soon. Um, for Fedora Council business, um, next week we have, or next week, next month we have the Fedora release party instead of our normal video meeting. So please come join us at the Fedora 35 release party. That will be fun. I'll be doing my 35 releases of Fedora in 30 minutes talk there, and there'll be a bunch of other fun stuff as well. Um, and then um, I don't think we have anything planned for December yet, but we'll see. And again, thank you, everybody. Bye. Thanks. Bye-bye.